James. Uh, go ahead and say who you are. You know. Is rolling? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm James Lambden above the waterline in Santa Barbara, and uh, the electric drive that I put in here. And we took we we have uh, four batteries that are propelling the boat. Uh, and they are uh, the energy for that is 12 is 12 volt batteries four of them 2250 from uh, Odyssey and they are serial together and uh, and then we have goes into the controller and the controller uh, which is an electronic we'll see that at the helm right what's the, the the actual accelerator, the, yeah. the, the throttle. The throttle. There's the motor installed. What else would you like to say about this, James? How many watts? What what is it? Well, it's a it's a 4.7 kilowatt um, motor, but the amount of energy that it develops uh, is dependent on the gear ratio and the propeller that you have on the boat. And this particular prop has a 17 by 17 prop. And we're, we've got uh, five to one gears on it, so it's turning it to about 580 RPM or something like that. Okay. Um, so it creates I'm developing it. about 70 uh, amps at uh, 50 volts, or it, it only develops this one about three and a half kilowatts. But uh, we could make it to uh, develop more power if we if we drop the gear ratio to four and a half to one or or at four to one or something like that then it would uh, the, the motor would would uh, require more power to turn it so it's uh, it's all dependent on the gearing and the prop and what's the displacement of this boat? 17,000 pound boat at uh, 43 feet and this little motor here pushes this boat at uh, 3.7 knots um, it's taking the place of a 55 horsepower diesel but the owner only wanted it to navigate in and out of the slip and uh, he just he just uh, he didn't want to have a diesel on board the boat. So regeneration will be through solar panels and the prop itself. Yeah. This is the actual uh, controller is right here on the wall. This is the controller yeah. here, yeah. and it's really important that you use this heat paste yep. when you mount it to the, this is a heat sink here, and then yeah. I've got an additional fan on the back, that if necessary. Um, we haven't found it necessary, and then there's an additional duct behind that, uh -huh. that we can even draw more heat off of the, the one. Right. But on this particular application, it wasn't the controller that was uh, building the heat first, it, we felt it was the motor. I see. So um, we were just, uh, I took the motor off and then I mounted the motor with the heat paste as well because the, the um, gearbox makes an ideal heat sink. Right. Um, it's got decent thermal mass. Yeah. So there's another motor that we have, a 10 inch motor, and it's a sealed motor. Mm -hmm. And one of the nice things about it is the contact face with the flange mm -hmm. is a lot bigger. I think. So we could have even better heat distribution. This is about an 8 inch motor. That's, this is an 8 inch, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, they're, they're great motors. They're just powerhouse motors. Right. Um, I always think, you know, like if you're crossing an ocean or something like that, just take a spare motor. Right. <laughs> you know, it, doesn't, it takes about 15 minutes to change a motor. Right. Just just in case, um, but uh, these motors have a terrific reputation mm -hmm. for just doing, you know, like 48 volts, and they'll go up to 200 amps right. for uh, a couple minutes, two, three minutes, um, but they'll run it up to 120 amps continuous. Right. Um, I don't know if I would want to run them that hot, but yeah. they'll yeah. do it. Sure. Um, there's some applications where they're running them at 130 continuous. I don't, I don't know the application. That's just hearsay. So, right. 
But uh, I think I, I consider it a hundred amp continuous motor. Yeah, yeah. I think that's reasonable. So that's why I'm rating it, you know, just a little bit under five kilowatts. Sure. Actually, the rating on this is more the rating of the controller. You, uh -huh. It's either the controller or the motor that has the limitation in the system. Sure. And in this particular system, it's the controller's rating that's the limitation. Because this is limited at uh, about 95 amps. Oh, okay. So 95 amps at 50 volts, and you get to about 4.7 kilowatts. What uh, what controller is this? This is Sefcon's uh, Millipack controller. Okay. Uh, we're we're going to make a generational change here and go up to the Gen 4. Uh -huh. It's a uh, it's going to be a few hundred dollars more. Right. Um, but it's a more the Gen 4 is a more robust controller, and then it'll be definitely the heat, the, the motor that'll be the, the limiting factor. Right. Because the Gen 4 is capable of 180 amps continuous. Oh, okay. Like that. Yeah. But uh, the nice thing about the Gen 4 too is it'll it's, it's a can fully com fully um, can bus compliant. So you can download it out yeah. to a PC and run Well, you do that. We do that with this. Okay. We like download everything out to the PC with this. So, um, but it'll have its own display. Oh, okay, yeah. Right. And that's where you said the display is real robust. The the display is it, it gives you a lot of information as as you go. Um, it give you your RPMs and. I we haven't seen the display yet, okay. but I imagine it'll be RPM and. Power consumed and current and you know, temperature and, and temperature <laughs> yeah all the stuff you so, want right. Every you can back every off time, if it gets hot. Yeah. Every time we do one, we do it. We, we get a little bit better at yeah. it. Yeah. You know? And and the motor mounts and the and the motor mounting system that you made here. Uh, did you 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 uh, you actually design that or? Yeah, that's easy to build. Okay. It's just three. So you do it application specific. Yeah, you, I gotta have the the height of the rails Stringers, yeah. um, in comparison to the height of, of the, the drive trail. shaft. Yeah. So and did they, did you have to replace a drive shaft or a prop on this boat? I did. There was a folding prop on this boat, and now it's a, a fixed prop. And what size prop? And what type of prop did you put on it for your best performance? Uh, this is a 17 by 17, but we could have gone a little larger. Um, but the nice thing about this is it regenerates well. Mm -hmm. We got 200 watts out of it at six knots of boat speed. Um, so that's a combination of having the right pitch and the right gear. Mm -hmm. So I'm more, I'm really interested in the regenerative capabilities of these, sure. these units. That makes it somewhat of an opportunity for a cruising vessel if the regeneration's handled well. Yeah, and I believe that, that that's just gonna get better. Matter of fact, on my boat, I'm gonna do a whole project on just specifically for regen. Yeah. Like I'm going to design my whole system for regen, and then it, and then accept whatever propulsion it gives okay. me. Basically, All right. I mean it'll be fine because the whole system that I plan to put on my boat is going to be, you know, probably I don't know, 50 percent more than what I need. Right. But uh, um, I'm going to. So you have a battery switch. So the way to turn this boat on is you basically have a battery switch, and then you key. have a key switch. And you can hear that the key switch started up the fan in the back of the controller to kind of keep it cooler. And you can also... Yeah. Lots of torque. Good. Now we're going to go outside and look at the wake it's producing. That's basically the. So that's the sound issue. That's the only downside of running a gearbox. Uh huh. Everything else is a great benefit. If I don't run a gearbox, then the motor has to be. But you, go ahead and turn it to uh, neutral, and then forward. That was forward. And then reverse. Yeah, you won't see anything with reverse. Be about the same. Um, well, you won't you won't see anything. 
ones that way on the boat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have to still pull that controller out where it's right. usable here. Let me figure out these. So now that noise that you do not hear is an electric propulsion sailboat backing out of the slip with full control because it had torque at 1 RPM. Yeah, that's Hop on. Nice, really nice thing about it. Go, go, jump. He can control it. With a, a diesel motor. Hang on, James. Go ahead. With, with a diesel motor, you have uh, down to, you know, you, you, when you shift it into gear, the prop turns at about three to 350 RPM. Uh, with an electric motor, that, that's a minimum prop right. speed. With an electric motor, you go down to 10 RPM. Right. So if you need to slow it down, and so it, so it makes whether it's an avid sailor or somebody's just starting, an electric propulsion system becomes very easy to navigate. Oh, it gives you way more control over the boat, like when you're docking the boat. It's way more control. Okay. Because you can just creep in. You get a creeper gear. And and you can also put it in reverse in a very rapid sense in case you are getting ready to touch somebody else's boat or dock. Yeah, you can you can gear them so that they have twice as much power um, at, at uh, <laughs> There you go. You can gear, depending on how you gear them, you can gear them so that uh, they have more, more power than a diesel for collision avoidance if you want, but that's done at the expense of efficiency. But some people want that. I have a customer that uh, has heavy tides, uh, tidal currents, and he wanted a lot of power to be able to... At low speeds, yeah. Yeah, so he did that. This boat here is geared for efficiency. So and, and the loud noise you hear to our left is somebody's uh, bilge pumps going yeah. and their engine going where the quiet noise we hear is the propulsion system of the boat. Yeah, that's all. It's just a little, it's a little minor whine. Yeah, well, once he puts that away, like once he puts that on there, you don't notice it. And, he, and he's getting ready to put on the cover. Our, uh, our potential electric boat owner, what's your name, sir? Eric. Hi, Eric. How you doing? Yeah, and what kind of boat do you have? I have a 1964 Troy Lee Bermuda 30. It's a uh, catch. Okay. And uh, it's the little one cylinder, 12 horsepower diesel just kind of uh, gave up the ghost. So I'm looking at repowering, and this is obviously one of my alternatives. And you're, you're covering the motor, right. covering the electric motor from above the water line. And, and now, I guess we can carry on a, a really nice conversation here, no right? Because we have, uh, we have no uh, diesel noise. No diesel noise. Yeah. It's a little bit of gearbox noise. That's it. Yep. Another electric boat? Yeah. They're all around here. Yeah. Yeah. I should have said.